All right, we did it. We went live. Hey guys, uh, all my friends on the internet, all the Facebook advertisers out there. Uh, my name is Brian Mert. I'm the CEO of Advertisement. We, uh, we're a digital agency that specializes in just Facebook ads. So we're beginning a new segment. We're going to go live every Tuesday at 10 a.m. For our people who want to learn more uh, about Facebook advertising, we're going to talk about the latest things that are coming out. Uh, and we're also going to uh, do live Q&As uh, at the end where you can ask any questions you want uh, and I will answer them for you if I can. Uh, so with that, uh, we want to get started and kind of go through. So some of the things that, you know, starting out, we want to make sure that we uh, talk about are we love engagement or I love getting engagement back. So as you guys are watching this, whether you're watching it live right now or you're watching it later uh, down the road, uh, feel free to put lots of likes, share some love, uh, put the emotions that you're feeling as we're going through things. If there's something that uh, you haven't heard of before or you're like, oh man, that's really valuable, show it in the form of emotions uh, and go ahead and, and add those. The more of those we get, the higher up it raises so that other people can be able to view and watch this live broadcast as well. Um, kind of some of the format, we're going to do updates uh, for a couple of minutes in the beginning and then at the end I'll do live Q&As uh, where I'll ask, answer any questions that uh, anyone watching may have in relation to Facebook advertising and how it works. Um, but yeah, I think with that we can go ahead um, and get started. Make sure uh, to, to like our page on Facebook. That's going to ensure that you are alerted every time we go live. Uh, we're also going to do every Friday, we're going to try to go live on YouTube as well. So if you find our YouTube page, you can subscribe to that to be able to get the latest in uh, the YouTube live videos as well. But hopefully this is something that will be valuable to you. Uh, and with that, we want to go ahead and get started. So some of the updates, the first one that I have today is Facebook IQ, which is Facebook's, um, it, it's like a division that Facebook has where they do research. Uh, and they do a lot of analysis and research in relation to how Facebook advertising is doing in comparison with other areas, with certain verticals. Uh, it's very fascinating. If you've ever, never checked out Facebook IQ, you want to be able to go, there's a website that you can Google where they have a lot of their research findings that you can be able to look at for, um, to, to be able to find more information about how Facebook is performing. Uh, just recently, within the last you know one to two days, they announced a new Facebook IQ blog or, or podcast where they're now doing a weekly or a podcast that's available to listen to. Uh, and I, I was able to kind of get a, a first glimpse of it, and it sounded great. In fact, it's their first episode. Uh, is talking about Instagram versus magazines and kind of the difference there and how it works. Um, and they have, along with their podcast, kind of some show notes. And I wanted to go over a couple of the notes really quick um, so that you guys could be able to, to hear what some of them are. So most people go to magazines, um, you know, if they're looking for a fashion fix, beauty how-tos, fitness tips. Um, and here's some of the findings that they found when they were comparing Instagram versus traditional magazines. Um, number one, people look to Instagram for inspirations and magazines uh, for trusted information. So that's generally been kind of the consensus behind you know where they go. Instagram is very creative and inspirational. Magazines maybe feel a little more established, a little more trustworthy. Um, but a couple of facts they had, um, people turned to Instagram throughout the day when they were looking at you know, how do these people use Instagram versus a magazine? Um, and the three big segments that people had is when they wake up or when they go to bed, people are more likely to turn to Instagram over a magazine um, while they're watching TV. And the biggest one was during a commercial break on TV, people actually stop and go onto Instagram and look through their feed. And so that was the one, uh, one big segment that they were able to find where Instagram was very powerful over magazines in terms of reaching consumers. Uh, they also showed that 72% of, um, 72 of Instagrammers say that they feel connected to people with similar interests. 65% uh, of those chose Instagram um, over magazines for community. Uh, they say they feel like there's more of a community 
uh, when it comes to that. Um, and 57% of people said they chose magazines over Instagram for detailed information, meaning there was much more in-depth information. It was coming from an expert that was taking the time to make sure that was the information was quality. Uh, a couple other things I noticed, trusted information comes from a community of people not just one expert and a lot of people that are trending towards Instagram are finding this and they say that people people that use both magazines and Instagram 1.5% are more likely 1.5 more percent are more likely to say that Instagram provides information from peers and communities that are relevant relevant to them versus magazines so there's definitely a higher level of relevant information coming from Instagram um, when compared directly with magazines. And then finally, um, millennials. Uh, you know, they were able to find that millennials subscribe to Instagram and that it's the source for younger generations. 1.51% um, uh, use um, Instagram over magazines to stay on top of trends, for inspiration and motivation, to look for a new brand, and then also for product reviews. So on all four of those areas, Instagram rated higher than magazines uh, especially when it came to young, uh, young millennials. So it was very interesting. If you haven't checked it out, uh, you can go to the Facebook IQ, look for their blog, um, recent blog article where it talks about their new podcast, and that's something good uh, for you to be able to, to check out. Um, let's see. Next up, Facebook fundraising. Uh, within the last week to two weeks, Facebook launched a fundraising option. So traditionally, if you wanted to raise money for uh, a, a fundraising cause, you would use GoFundMe, maybe Kickstarter, Indiegogo. There's a variety of different platforms that you can use. Facebook has now entered into that. Um, and here's a little bit of how it works. So one, you have to either be a verified page where you have the blue badge um, uh, on, on next to your page, so a celebrity or someone that's been verified, or you have to be a registered 501c3 charity on Facebook. Um, once you do that, you have to be able to use um, an iOS device only. That's the only place where it's available for now. And people can donate. When you go live, a donate button will appear uh, under your live uh, stream that people can donate towards a specific cause. Um, I tried to go live from to, to put that option here. Um, and because we have the gray verified badge, not the blue one, it didn't appear. So you definitely have to have the blue verified badge. Uh, they've opened it to all users. So from my personal profile page, not the company page, I was able to see this option. So if you wanna be able to enable it for you, here's what you need to do. Um, before you go live, down at the bottom in a bar, there's three little dots. You need to select that um, and there will be an option that says add donate button. Uh, once you select that, you can then be able to go through and search for either a list of charities uh, that you want to donate the money to be donated to, or you have the ability to eventually enter your own. Um, right now, the, the categories that you can be able to use for this are education, medical, uh, veterinarian, um, if it's a crisis or a personal emergency, or if it's for like a funeral or a loss. Um, and to be able to, to do this, you have to submit to Facebook um, and they'll be able to, uh, um, you know, they'll approve it within 24 hours uh, and then you can be off and be able to, to raise money for your cause if you want to. Um, they just do this to make sure that, you know, the causes are legit um, and that there isn't any misuse of the platform. In terms of fees, they take 6.9% uh, of whatever you raise in addition to 30, 30 cents per transaction and they use this to cover the processing fees, the vetting, the screening, uh, any fraud protection. So uh, they're saying that they're not trying to make money from this. Uh, these are just the expenses that they use um, to be able to, to run the, the platform efficiently and this feature on there. But very exciting um, because now you can leverage all the power of your social network to be able to go after people um, on Facebook and be able to, to get them to learn more about you. Um, next up is category blocking. So Facebook has added a couple of new updates for category blocking uh, recently. So this really comes into place when it is instant articles, um, audience network, or in-stream videos. So when you select those as placements, what happens is your videos um, or your ads are shown out across a wide network of potential placements where it could go. Um, a lot of people are like, well, I don't necessarily want my ad everywhere or next to certain types of content. So Facebook has continued to add options to this 
Um, and they just added a couple of advanced options where you're saying, I don't want to appear on um, different types of sites. Now, here's the categories that you can be able to block for now. Um, you have dating, gambling, uh, if it's a mature audience, um, tragedy or conflict. Uh, and then the fifth one is what would be, they call debatable social issues. So something that a lot of people is being riled up, it's a social issue that there may be people on both sides. So you have the ability to select any one of those categories and your ads would no longer be shown next to any content that's related to that. So you know, if you're an advertiser, this is very effective to make sure that you, know, you are or are not aligned with what could be controversial topics. Um, the other thing that you do that they allowed is for advertisers to upload a list of 10,000, up to 10,000 URLs or app store URLs of uh, either websites or apps that you don't want your ad to appear on. So if you have competitors, if you have a couple of places where you're noticing a lot of traffic coming from that you're like, man, this doesn't really convert in what we're doing, um, you would have the ability to uh, exclude those uh, from your advertising as well. Um, for number four, uh, the last thing that we've got right now in terms of updates is the annual Facebook awards. Uh, this is an option where anyone has the ability to submit ads that they've done to try to be able to win awards. Generally, it's the large agencies uh, that have you know full creative teams and everything that's that's been going on. But here's how it works: you have uh, five categories that you can be able to submit. Uh, ads under, whether it's ads that make people laugh, ads that make people cry, ads that make people love, ads that wow someone, and then ads that cause people to act. Um, so if you have one of those, you can, you're welcome to submit it. You just want to Google uh, the annual Facebook awards. Um, here's a criteria. The ad must be in English and the ad must have been created between April 1, 2016 and then April 28, April 28, 2017. So from right now from this live stream, you have about uh, two and a half weeks left uh, to be able to submit any of the ads that you want to for that. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the last update I have for today. So at this time, what I can do is uh, take any questions that people may have uh, if they're watching, uh, I know this is our first one and we're going to have a lot more, but any specific questions in relation to Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, uh, social advertising in general, uh, this is all we do all day, every day. So I'm going to sit here and see if I can watch any of these come through. We'll take them for a couple of minutes. Let's see. I see a lot of people watching. Let me see if I can get some likes back here while I'm waiting. People. Got Joseph's here. Thank you, Joseph. And he's got some comments back. Uh, Mauricia. We've got Fanny. Hi, Fanny. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, definitely, you know, Say hi, leave comments, uh, tell us your name. Uh, generally, I think you know, as you're watching this, the best approach that I would say is give us your name, where you're located, uh, so we can be able to say hi, um, where you're located, the company that you work for, uh, and then drop in a URL. So put that in there, um, and I'll be able to interact and kind of engage with some of the people uh, that are doing uh, different things out there. But I love to, to talk and to be able to, to offer advice if we can. Oh, we got comments from Joseph, thank you. I'm seeing more hearts go across the screen. Um, cool, so JC Cruz has a, a question, tuned in late, but what's working best for Facebook fundraising? Um, again, this is super new. Uh, so this, this feature has only come out in the last uh, two weeks. Um, I have yet to run a fundraising campaign, but we're going to be um, definitely working with those a lot more. Um, you can do it from both the personal level. So this is something that you can do right from your own personal account. It doesn't need to be through an ad account or through a fan page, um, which is so incredible because now, you know, the minute there's a cause or something that uh, you want to raise money for or you want to be able to, to make a difference or a change in the world, you have this tool. 
uh, that Facebook has enabled you now to be able to, to send it out to, you know, one, both all your social network and your closest people, and then two, everyone else that's on, um, on the planet. So, I mean, there's, there's 1.2 billion people that are on Facebook every single day, and you guys now have the ability to reach them. Uh, which is fantastic. So I'm not sure if that answered your question, uh, JC, but hopefully that goes a little bit more. Let's see what else. Is there any other questions? We've got Julian that just joined. Thank you, Julian. He's got a, a profile picture of him on a beach which is where I'd love to be right now. I'm a, little, I'm a little jealous of that. If you agree, throw some thumbs up on that one. Let's see a little thumbs up flying across the screen. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Uh, if you guys have any questions about Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, Snapchat advertising, uh, here's, here's one more, maybe quick little update. Um, uh, I spoke with Snapchat yesterday uh, they have, you know, they, as, for those of you who don't know, they recently did their IPO, um, where they've now gone public. They've raised a lot of money. Um, and to some extent, you know, over the past six months, Facebook has, for anyone that's, you know, looked at Instagram or things like that, they've copied a lot of the most, um, the best features from Snapchat and just kind of brought them over. Um, so now Snapchat that, that they went IPO, they've got a lot of money. And what I would guess is that now is Snapchat's turn to copy and they're launching an ad platform where they're gonna now allow self-service advertising onto Snapchat. Um, so this is something that's very new um, that, that probably will be coming soon. Um, that a lot of people, you know, if you're looking to, to find uh, access to younger demos or people that are, um, uh, you, know, you know, maybe a, a younger audience, uh, Snapchat works very, very well for that. And as they start to build out a lot of the ad options and placements and types of targeting, I would imagine that you'll see uh, the beginnings of, of a great system to be able to reach these people uh, based on. And I would imagine that their that Snapchat system is going to very closely resemble Facebook's as it starts to move forward. All right, let's see. So keep an eye on that. They said it was coming in the next couple of months, uh, but that's on its way. Let's see, we got uh, Alyssa, uh, Alyssa joined, or Alyssa's here. Uh, she says, hi. She's attended uh, some of my classes. I do teach classes uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, so from time to time, I go out there. So it's always great when they come check it out. Um, let me see, any other, any other questions that come through? Uh, we had another question from Joseph that says, have you had any success advertising with the audience network? Um, so the audience network for, for someone that may not necessarily know, it's Facebook has the ability to, they, they've partnered with mobile app developers who have mobile apps or other placements where ads could be shown. Um, and what they do is they, um, they will fill the spots that the mobile developer has. So if you have an app that's been developed, you can put Facebook's code in there and instead of you needing to go out and try to sell ads or getting people to advertise on you, Facebook just plays them in there and they split the revenue. Um, so in terms of success from that, we've seen a lot of um, good results come from mobile apps um, where you know people are doing app installs, a lot of times those are on mobile devices. Um, the value of the the mobile or the audience network is that you're able to get your message on other apps or other platforms beyond just Facebook and Instagram. So that's really where you can kind of expand your message out. So you know if you are a mobile app, or you're trying to get more users, or you're trying to reach people that you know are on a mobile device. If you're going very heavily towards mobile, that would be a wise move to make. Um, and to some extent, we, you know, Facebook will always tell you it's in your best interest to show ads everywhere, which includes the audience network. Uh, we've run tests that sometimes prove that is true. We've also run campaigns where it hasn't proved true and it becomes very expensive. So ultimately, it's up to you to test what works best for your specific campaign uh, or audience, but that's, uh, that's my advice 
towards that. Let's see what else. Great question, Joseph. Thank you. Um, Mauricio said, when is your next class? Um, it's April 30, uh, April 30th uh, in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I teach with uh, General Assembly. So I do an intro to our Facebook ads boot camp. It's about a five hour class where we go through a lot of different materials uh, on what is the latest in Facebook, how to be able to get into ads manager, power editor, how to create your custom audiences, how to install pixels. Uh, it's fantastic. So uh, I only teach maybe about once a month, uh, but I have a good time doing it. Uh, we have cash prizes in the class. So if you guys want to take a class, you're in the Los Angeles area, um, come check it out. Uh, you can go to generalassembly.com and uh, search for me, uh, my name, or search for uh, Facebook Ads Bootcamp. That's a great question. Um, do you think, we, okay, great question. Um, we have another question from Ann that says, do you think Snapchat advertising will be as good as Facebook business advertising? So uh, right off the bat, my thought would be no. They'll be, they'll be very good at things like reach or engagement. Uh, or uh, reach, frequency, engagement, branding, where they can get a message in front of a lot of people. Snapchat has a large user base. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's a great option. I think some of the options where they'll struggle with or they'll need more help is the direct response, which is what most advertisers want. They wanna spend money and they wanna make money out of it. And that needs to work for them if they're gonna continue. Um, Snapchat recently uh, updated some new, um, uh, app install ads where they're now trying to promote new app install ads as an objective that's very popular there's a lot of mobile apps that want more people to use it snapchat is used heavily on mobile uh, in fact that's where it, it is mobile so um, you know again that that's a natural kind of a overlay for it but i would expect over time um, snapchat to improve some of their targeting so, you know, right now Facebook has tons of data on users. Snapchat, maybe not as much. They know who you're following. Uh, they have some basic profile information when you sign up. But as Snapchat brings in more data partners um, in the same way that Facebook did, they'll be able to append some of that data and start to add additional layers of where people are located, uh, specific points in time. And I think, you know, it has the ability to do very well in terms of real time advertising so things around events things around a set location where you want a certain people that may you know maybe a baseball game and you want to target people that are in that baseball stadium i think snapchat is very efficient at that uh facebook not necessarily as much um, there's some ways that you can do it but it's not perfect yet where you can build geofences and things like that so i would expect snapchat to definitely give them um you know, I mean, Facebook's huge and Snapchat's just starting out, um, but I still think there would be, it'd be worth a test when they launch. So there we go. Um, another question about collection ads. Uh, what are they and, and how do they work? Uh, collection ads are a new ad format that recently came out a couple weeks ago with Facebook where to be able to set them up, you need to have dynamic product ads or, or your um, product feed uploaded, or I guess Facebook refers to it as a catalog. Uh, once your product catalog is uploaded to the site, you have the ability to create collection ads. And what happens is you can put a video um, above it. And then, so the video appears here and then below it, you can select the images or the products from your product feed to appear directly below the video. So these could be products that are being featured in the video uh, for you to be able to watch. Um, and it, it kind of bridges the gap between just watching a video um, and getting someone to buy and you know showing them an option where they're able to see and click and look through right to, uh, to be able to go to the specific product that might be featured in there. So very good for stores or people selling on uh, e-commerce or trying to generate more purchases um, from that. But I think for today, uh, that's about it, what we've got for time. I wanna thank you guys for attending. Um, if you have more questions, uh, we'll be back next Tuesday, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Uh, so just write down the questions that you have, uh, keep them, and next Tuesday we'll be live. Um, and then we'll also be going live on YouTube as well on Fridays. So subscribe to either of those. Check out our blog. If you go to advertisement.com slash blog, uh, a lot of our recent articles or the things that are coming up are there all the time. So we try to stay up on date so that you guys can as well. 
But that's it for today. I want to thank you guys for coming and have a great day.